Last time we studied these questions in the Hadith class. So now we will revise them. Can we severe by anyone's name except Allah Almighty? Tell me the answer. According to Hadith Masnad Imam Ahmad 329, if we swear by any other names other than Allah, then it would be considered as an act of shirk. Okay. What does the Hadith 2334 tells you? Um, it tells us that our desires are always higher than our life, so we can never fulfill all our desires. What should be done when anyone tries to start making changes in Islam? The Islam, according to this 335, that Islamic cover government should and must take aggressive action. Okay. With that person or group. Okay, last time we studied Hadith class or Quran class? What did we study last time, Mr. Muhammad? Hadith class. Hadith class. Okay, last time we studied Hadith class. Give me a second. Okay, so today we are going to study the Quran class. In Quran, we will start from the ayah 42 of Surah Nisa. So the first student, Ms. Suhoor. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Read this. On that day, don't show no girl. Yes, on that day, those who disbelieved and this disobeyed the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will wish that they were buried in the earth, but they will never be able to hide a single fact from Allah. So this saya tells us two things. Give me a second. Let me remove this noise. So this Quranic ayah tells us two things. First thing that when the disbelievers will see their fate in the next life, they will wish that they would be rather dead rather than alive at that time. And second thing, we cannot hide anything from Allah. Whatever is in your heart, whatever is in your mind, anything is, everything is in front of Allah. You Nobody can hide anything from Allah Almighty. No need to write any question from this one. So next student, Ummu Ahmad, Ayah 43. Oh, you who believe, Approach not a salah, the prayer, when you are in a drunken state until you know the meaning of what you utter, nor when you are in a state of janab, in a state of sexual impurity and have not yet taken a bath, except when traveling on the road without enough water or just passing through a mosque, till you wash your whole body. And if you are ill or on a journey, or one of you comes after answering the call of nature, or you have been in contact with woman by sexual relationship and you find no water, perform tayammam with clean earth and rub there with your faces and hands, tayammam. Truly Allah is ever oft pardoning, oft forgiving. Okay, so the first thing, approach not salah when you are in drunken state. So Islam did not for, forbid the alcohol in one go. 
first it was disliked then it was made haram only at the time of salah then it was permanently banned so this thing is related to that order in which it was banned only during the salah time but later this part is abrogated so it is not valid anymore we can never drink alcohol whether it is salah time or whether it is not salah time we can never drink alcohol second thing this hadith tells us that we cannot pray in the state of janaba can do you know what is state of janaba or muhammad zoom user anyone when you are not clean or oh, when you are not clean or you we can say when the islamic bath is obligatory for us what is the state of Janaba? What is the state of Janaba? In the answer, you will write state of Janaba mean Islamic bath is obligatory necessary upon you state of janaba means islamic bath is obligatory necessary upon you miss hood repeat the question and the answer what is the state of what is the state of janaba islamic take bath compulsory or obligatory upon you okay Can you pray Salah in the state of Janaba? Can you pray Salah in the state of Janaba? So according to Aya 43, no, we cannot. No, we cannot. <clears throat> Unless we perform Islamic bath. Unless or until we perform Islamic bath. Ms. Muhammad, repeat the question and the answer. Can you pray Salah in the state of Janaba? According to Ayah 43, no, we cannot unless we perform Islamic bath. Okay. So here we need to write one more question. When do you enter in the state of Janaba or when does Islamic bath becomes obligatory? Obligatory means necessary upon you. When does Islamic bath become obligatory upon you? Anyone can you tell me the answer? 
when you are in a state of janaba so when does islam state of janaba become when you when do you enter the state of janaba or how do you enter the state of janaba write the answer so the question is when does slamming bath become necessary for you or you can also call it when do you enter the state of janaba same question same answer the answer is first thing after sex point number 1 after sex point number 2 after menstruation after menstruation point number 3 after wet dream after wet dream point number 4 after nifas after nifas and yeah do you know what is nifas yes when you deliver a baby yes the blood comes out for some days that is called nifas so after nifas these are the four main things which everyone faces in daily life so first thing is after sex second thing is after menstruation which happens to every woman nobody can avoid it third thing is wet dream which is very uh, rare in the women but it is a normal thing or almost we can say a necessary thing among the unmarried boys so it happens to every unmarried boys wet dream it is a normal thing if it does not happen to them then it will cause some problems to them then the fourth one is nifas so these are the four things which we face in our daily life and in these four situation islamic bath become necessary for you next can you pray salah in the state of janaba we have already written the answer okay miss who tell me the answer of second question Muhammad. When does Islamic bath becomes obligatory upon you? After sex, after menstruation, after wet dream, after nifas. Okay. Third question we have already written. Then, how to perform or how to make? islamic bath you can also call it how to perform bath of janaba same question how to perform bath of janaba can you tell me mr muhammad First, we have to put the near intention. Okay. And then. And then we wash all our body. Mm. Okay, we wash all our body. This is the first. The answer you told is correct. It's correct, but uh, it is not according to Sunnah. In the Sunnah method of Islamic bath is this. First, of course, Nia, you can say. Then wash your private parts with left hand. Write it down. I will ask you. Private parts with left hand. This is the step one. Then wash your hands. Then 
make voodoo. Voodoo is same, just like you do the voodoo for Salah, except one thing that instead of wiping the wet hands out the head, you put your wet hands inside the hairs. Okay. Inside, instead of doing masa, you will put your wet hands inside the head hair, the hair which are on your head. But for women who are having braids in their hairs, they don't need to open their braids for the bath of Janaba. But for the bath of menstruation, you need to open the braids as well. Okay. Do you know what is braids? Do you know? Yes. Hmm. Some women don't know the braids. So this is called braids. The this girl having braids. Okay. So if it is the bath of Janaba after uh, sex or red dream, no need to open braid. But if it is bath of Janaba after menstruation, then you need to open braids as well. Then put water on right side from head to feet okay and then put water on left side from head to feet and the important step the most important thing water must touch whole body, especially the joint. So you need to make sure that water must touch the whole body. Hold, are you here? Um, Muhammad? Yes. Okay, so how do we perform the bath of Janabha, stomach bath? First, uh, private part, wash private part with left hand. Yes. Then wash your hands. Yes. Then make wudu. Okay. And in, then? And then you put water head to feet. From right side. From right side, yeah. And then you put water from left, left side from head to feet. And the most important and then thing. Water must touch whole body, especially the joint. Okay, and do you need to open your braids? Um, yes, you need to open your braids. For which bath? Bath for, of menstruation. Okay. By bath of menstruation, yeah. Mm, but for other bath, like after sex, that is not necessary. Okay, I understand. Only for menstruation bath, you need to open braids for other not needed. Okay, okay. I didn't know that. Shukran. Okay. So normally these days we have uh, water almost everywhere. So we can perform bath or make wudu easily. But let's suppose in case you don't find any water, you are a place where there is no water to make bath or make wudu, then you can perform the yamam. And how to perform the yamam? It is written here. Strike your hands on that, and then pass the palm on each of the other and then blow off the dust from them, pass it up on your face. This is Karta Yemo. It is very simple. Just pass the hand on soil, then strike the dust off, then pass the or rub the, them with your face. That is enough. The Tayamam, you just do the face only. Yes, face only. And some say that hand of 
arms as well, but none needed. So we will not write any question for the yamam. And and maybe if you do tayammam, do yeah. you need to do kada for the prayer, or you've already prayed is enough? You prayed that is enough. No need to kaza. Okay. Shukra. Okay, who are you back? Yes. Okay, read 44. Have you not seen th those who were given a portion of the book, the Jews, hmm. purchasing the wrong path and wish that you should go astray from the right path? So basically, Allah is telling us about the Jews that they are giving, uh, they were given the book, but they are purchasing the wrong path. Purchasing the wrong path means they are using religion for worldly benefits. They are using the religion for worldly benefits. And they also wish that Muslims also go astray from the right path. No need to write any question for this. Read the next one as well. Allah has full knowledge of your enemies and Allah is sufficient as a protector and Allah is sufficient as a helper. So whenever you feel your enemies are very strong, whether that enemy is Muslim or whether that enemy is a non-Muslim, you need to remember this ayah. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَلِيَا And Allah is sufficient as wali. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ نَسِيرَا And Allah is sufficient as a helper. So Muslim these days are just helpless weak they don't have any knowledge they don't have much knowledge they are also indulged in worldly life and their enemies are quite strong but Allah is enough as worldly and protector especially okay no the 46 so Muhammad Among those who are Jews, there are some who dis displace words from their right places and say, we hear your word, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and disobey, and hear and let you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hear nothing, and ra ra'ina with a twist of their tongue, and as a mockery of the religion Islam, and if only they had said, we hear and obey, and do make us understand it will have been better for them and more proper. But Allah has cast them for their disbelief. So they believe not except a few. So if you know Arabic language, then you will understand this chronic ayah better. In Arabic, a word has very good meaning. But if we make slightly slight changes in the pronunciation, it meaning changes completely and often it becomes bad. So Jews were using the same tactics. Instead of saying the correct pronunciation, they were intentionally using the wrong pronunciation. And sometimes the word has good meaning in Arabic, but the same word has bad meaning in Arabic. So they were using those words for profit with bad intention. So that time this Quranic ayah was revealed that they are making mockery of Prophet and Islam. But Allah has cursed them for their disbelief. So no need to write any question here. Miss Hose, next. Oh, you who have been given the... and Christ believe in what we have believe, revealed
to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam confirming what is already with you before we efface faces by, by making them like of necks without nose mouth eyes and turn them hind words or curse them as we cursed the sabbath breakers and and the command commandment of allah is always executed so basically this was a warning to jews and christian to believe in prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or may allah cause changes to their face and necks and their physical appearance just like allah has done with the sabbath breaker sabbath breakers and in which uh, they were jews some jews were not allowed to hunt fishes on saturday but what jews saw that on saturdays more fish is used to appear so they set up trap uh, traps on friday to catch automatically catch the fishes on saturday so allah changes their faces and their physical appearance so that warning was given to them embrace islam or you may face the same consequences no need to write anything mr muhammad Verily, Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him in worship, but he forgives except that anything else to whom he wills. And whoever set up partners with Allah in worship, he has indeed invented a tremendous sin. So all of us make some sins. Nobody is 100% pure. Sometimes we make sin and we are unaware that we are making a sin. So here Allah tells us that Allah may forgive every, every sin, but Allah will never forgive the shirk. So shirk is the sin which Allah will never forgive. And other sins, may Allah forgive them or may Allah not forgive them. But shirk is a thing which Allah will never forgive. No need to write any question here again. So that's enough for today, I believe. Next time, inshallah, we'll start Aya 49. Do you have uh, any question? Anybody? No question. So we'll continue next time, inshallah. Ma salama. Inshallah, jazakallah khair. Why? Why, Yakun?